All right, time to talk about balls. Hey everyone, guess who it is? And as promised, we're gonna talk about balls. But first, I want to take you back to the antique time of 2008. A time where Toei Satan was released. Now, along with it, Toei Satan brought a story related mechanic. Weather. To explain it simply, weather triggers a random weather effect from a designated pool. Some being alright, others being meh, and some making you say... Out of this house! Out of this house! But why were they so bad? Well, technically speaking, these effects remove something necessary in a fighting game. Player control over the character. River Mist prevented players from going too close or too far from each other, messing with precise movements. Spring Haze, on the other hand, prevented fighting altogether by simply removing melee attacks, which, in a fighting game, doesn't seem like a very good idea. But what about Typhoon? <sighs> well, somehow, Typhoon did even worse than those two even if it didn't remove character control from the player, as it removed something way worse, the consequences of a player's action. Let's say that you want to punch someone in the face. This person's normal reaction should be, OW! What the fuck? Why did you hit me? But when Typhoon is activated, removing all knockback, stun and guard, it just becomes a cat fight to see which one has a bigger damage number. Now, you may be thinking, why am I talking about this now? Does it have anything to do with balls? Why is cheese tastier than salt? Well, keep in mind what I just said, and we'll talk about it in a bit. Introducing Toe 13.5, Opalist Masquerade, and with it, Tassifro wanted to make sure this calamity of weather effects didn't happen again, and so they created the popularity system. Now, the popularity system works like so. In order to seduce a crowd composed of two drunk Oni, a cast of secondary characters, and one too many men in the Toa universe, you must battle until your popularity reaches 100%. And if you have the biggest popularity rate at the end of the timer, you win! However, you can still KO your opponent before the timer runs out in order to do so. Getting 100% popularity also allows you to use your last word, which is a very powerful move dealing between 50 and 70% of the enemy's health bar in damage, which encourages aggressive play. Now, this system would work in a balanced game, which Upless Masquerade unfortunately isn't. Just to take an example, Marisa. Marissa has excellent dashing speed, pretty good melee attack with good reach, fast projectiles with horizontal and vertical area denial, and incredible combo potential. This makes her very hard to fight against, and making a system that is based around aggressiveness in a game where characters aren't balanced clearly gives an advantage to the latter. Of course, this system was not without good intentions, but it could have worked with a well-balanced game. So. What does this have to do with Isoten? Well, um, nothing, but once again, keep the popularity system in your mind for later. Now that we've gone full circle, we are back in 2015, with the release of Toa 14.5, Urban Legend in Lim- Oh, I'm sorry, I meant- Super Smash Bros. in Limbo, featuring Psychomantis from the Metal Gear series. Don't get the wrong idea, I love what Illul tried to do, but it pales in comparison to other games. Let's talk about the first problem, speed. Because Upless Masquerade was so fast and open for combos, Illul tried to tone that down a bit in order to give new players a chance against more veteran players, which it's logical in my opinion, but it gives the game a very sluggish feeling. On top of that, and that is the main attract of this video, and also the main reason why I like to call this game Super Smash Bros, is the apparition of the game's special mechanic, Occult Balls. Story-wise, they make a lot of sense. It is also a very smart plan coming from the main antagonist of the game, but gameplay-wise, the execution is just a mess. Alright, 
Let's see how it works. Around a certain time, based around how much people fought before, a knockout ball would appear. In order to claim this ball, you must touch it with your character. Not with their moves, but with their hitboxes. Each hit counts as one seventh of the ball. Claim more pieces than your opponent, and you will get the ball for yourself. Now, here's the issue with this mechanic. It stores battles completely, akin to a smash ball. When the ball appears, each player tries to get it by any means necessary. This can mean stalling the ball in the corner, or simply beating the other player so he can't get it. Moreover, the first one to get the ball will have a significant advantage, since he will unlock the occult attack of his character first, giving him the upper hand. Not to mention, in order to use your last word, you must collect 4 of those balls. However, the last word removes way less health than before, and by the time those 4 balls will be collected, it will already be the end of the game. Unless you stall for time, making the game feel even more sluggish. I think you're starting to see a pattern. Needless to say that this mechanic is pretty flawed itself. But it's even worse than weapon in this case, because even if you choose to ignore it, it can affect your character in a bad way, by shrinking the stage, or for example, removing health. Yeah, because that's totally fair. Also, the second player gets blue balls. Yeah, so there's that. Now, I wouldn't make this kind of video just to complain about mechanics, right? And you would be correct. Now, let's talk about Toe and Tinami of Commons Flower mechanic, Perfect Possession. This is for me the best mechanic so far, as it isn't presented like a simple gimmick in addition to the already existing moves. As the name implies, Perfect Possession allows you to switch to another character during the fight, giving you two sets of attack to work with, and you can use this whenever you feel like it with the press of a button. However, the use of the slave is restricted by a meter to prevent spam, and in order to fill this meter, you must inflict damage, forcing aggressive behavior on both ends of the screen. So the reason why it works so well is because it allows for more diversity, but also because both players have this ability at the beginning of the game, making it balanced in a way. They can, for example, use their occult attack at the first second. Speaking of it, the occult attack consumes your slave meter for a short period of time in this game, preventing spam like in Tor 14.5. And here, the last word consumes your slave, as well as all of your spell cards, meaning it's a double-edged sword. However, here you decide whether you want to do it or not, and it removes 75% of the enemy's health, making it worthwhile to take risks. I think Tassel Fro found a good way to balance Opless Masquerade system while keeping it relatively simple for newer players. Weather effects are gone, and here, the pace of the game is decided not by the game itself, but by the players. Honestly, I hope they keep going with this formula without reverting to the old ball system. Now, if only they could fix the story mode. So, what is my opinion as a whole for Antinomy of Common Flowers? 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, best king, best king. Hey everyone, guess what? You made it through the video! Yay! Anyway, thank you for watching it. It's my first time I ever do this kind of 9 minute long video, so I don't know how it will turn out, but maybe you'll like it. If so, tell me in the comments. Also, tell me if you dislike something about the video, I'm open to criticism. And on that note, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye bye!